So last time we were together, we were discussing some basic graph definitions and I kind of forgot one, it's an important one. And we refer to certain graphs as simple graphs. And simple graphs do not have self loops. What do I mean by that? Here, for example, is a self loop and complicated or non-simple graphs are allowed to have self loops, but in a simple graph, we don't have edges that start and end on the same node. And they also don't have multi edges. So for example, if I had this, you can see now there are two edges between C and G. That's not allowed in a simple graph. There are other graphs that might have that. Uh, they don't have weights. Now we haven't talked about weighted graphs yet, but in some graphs, these edges, they have weights associated with them. For example, assume that this was a graph that showed flights that take place for a particular airline. So this might be New York City, and that's Chicago, and that's LA. And the weights here might be the distances from one city to another. So here, between like maybe New York and Florida, maybe that's like 400 miles or something like that. And so the edges could have weights on them. We're gonna be dealing a lot with graphs with weighted edges later in the course. And lastly, a simple graph does not have directions on its edges. So there are no arrows like this. That would be a directed graph that's not simple anymore. Okay, so in terms of what a simple graph is, it's a graph that doesn't have any of these four things. A graph consists of two sets, a set of vertices and a set of edges. We refer to the letters capital V to refer to all the vertices and the letter capital E to refer to all the edges. On this particular graph, you can see that the vertexes are labeled as A through H. Even though we have listed them with individual capital letters and we have listed the letters in a row, it's important to understand that in a mathematical definition of a graph, there is no ordering of the vertices or the edges, and therefore, I could have just as well listed this as B, G, H, A, C, and in some other order, it, it just doesn't matter. Similarly, the edges are not in any particular order either. That's why they're referred to as sets. Sets are an unordered collection. Vertexes are also called nodes. I'm gonna be using these two terms interchangeably. If we look at and wanna examine the number of vertices, in other words, in this graph, how many vertices are there? There's eight. We would write that like this. And here we're using the absolute value symbols to indicate number of. So here it's saying that the number of vertices is eight. So try to understand that the capital V is a set of vertices themselves. And then when we put these bars here, we're basically saying, what is the magnitude or how many are there? And here we're saying that they're gonna be eight vertices. We often represent this capital V in shortcut with the little v, which is what I have shown here. Likewise, E represents the edges these would be the edges for that graph. And if I wanted to know how many edges there were, I would use this symbol here. And that is going to be denoted by the little e. Now, my question to you is, why is it that the maximum number of edges for a graph that has v vertices, why is that approximately v squared? This has something to do with something we have already learned last time we were together, I would like you to discuss with your partner, where does this relationship come from? I'm talking about simple graphs only, I should have mentioned that. So for example, this graph right here, it has eight vertices. What is the maximum number of edges it could have? It would be eight times seven divided by two. So you can see here that this number is approximately n square because the formula is n times n minus one over two. And the two of course can be taken outside the big O and here you're getting a number that's close to n square. So that's why the maximum number of edges on a graph with V vertices is close to V square or n square. I meant to mention by the way, half the videos on YouTube use V as the number of vertices, and the other half of the videos use N. 
And this has to do with the fact that the vertices are sometimes called nodes. So V and they're the same thing. I will tell you that in the real world, in the real world, we typically get graphs with lots and lots of vertices. And on those graphs, the vast majority of them, they don't have nearly as many edges as this. Most graphs in the real world, the number of edges is going to be way, way smaller than the maximum allowed. When we process graphs, there are two questions that we frequently need to ask about the graph in our processing. We are given some vertex X and we want to know what are all the nodes or other vertices that are connected to that vertex. So for example, if I say, I would like to know what are all the vertices connected to vertex E, what would they be, Mr. Alejandro? It would just be B and H, you see that, right? Another top question that we frequently ask of a graph is, is there an edge between C and E? No. So the question we ask is, is there an edge between two vertices? So we need to make sure that however we store our graph inside our code, that the performance of these two operations is going to be relatively quick. What's the other thing we need to worry about when storing large graphs? What are the two things we worry about in our computer science algorithms? Yes, sir, memory. Time and speed are the same thing. We worry about memory usage. So in a minute, I'm gonna go over three different algorithms for storing graphs in code. And we're gonna talk about the memory usage and the speed or the time for each of those algorithms.